Now, um, last slide is what could a transatlantic agenda for climate and biodiversity look like for the 21st century? Now, the EU Commission has already made a really ambitious proposal, wants to see, wants to establish a comprehensive transatlantic agenda. We're waiting for response uh, from the US because these things obviously need to um, be developed uh, in tandem. But I think Joe Biden has a lot on his plate right now. I'm still very positive, though, um, that uh, a proposition from the US will come. So what did the EU Commission propose? A joint trade and climate um, initiative, measures to avoid carbon leakage. I explained carbon leakage to you um, a few minutes ago. A green technology alliance. So we essentially throw our, our knowledge, our expertise together, and we build new batteries, um, high efficient batteries together, uh, for example. A global regulatory framework uh, for sustainable finance. I, spoke to you about um, finance uh, in the beginning as well. It's important that um, that's actually part of the Paris Agreement. The Paris Agreement says that financial flows are to be aligned with the goals of the Paris Agreement. So banks are not supposed to finance fossil fuel infrastructure anymore. They are not supposed to finance polluting activities anymore. And when they're giving a loan to a company or when they are investing in a company, that's the case for investment banks, they need to be uh, very careful. They need to fill out lots and lots of forms nowadays in the US. So uh, their activities are put under a lot of scrutiny to make sure that if they continue doing these kinds of finance, um, this pro project finance, um, at least it will be made transparent. It's not quite uh, prohibited yet. Um, joint leadership across the Atlantic in the fight against deforestation. I've just given you a few examples for deforestation, um, stepping up ocean protection, I've given you the example of the Great Barrier Reef. So these are all fantastic examples of how the transatlantic, uh, well, let's call it um, alliance, could work together for climate and bi biodiversity goals. Because as I've said throughout this presentation, this is at the end of the day an investment in security instability in peace. What do they need uh, on top of that? Of course, ideally, common, joint, similar, aligned domestic climate targets, common carbon emissions uh, standards. How, how do you, how, how do you um, make standards for, for products, uh, for instance, uh, when it comes to CO2? Would make a lot of sense um, to harmonize that across the Atlantic and also to harmonize carbon pricing um, across Europe and uh, the US. Then when it comes to um, more global policies, it would be helpful to collaborate on climate-induced conflicts. So how can you think climate and conflict resolution together? How, for instance, in certain African regions, uh, can you make sure through uh, development aid and development programming that uh, people have access to knowledge when it comes to farming or when it comes to crops that are more resilient um, to climate change? or that um, measures um, methods that don't harm uh, the soil, that don't harm the climate, that don't harm um, biodiversity as much as um, uh, current methods, for instance. Then joint support for a green transition in um, developing countries, that has to do a lot with technology transfer. It has to do um, with, uh, with finance, of course, climate finance. Um, that's what I said earlier on G7, didn't quite, uh, deliver any at least intention on more ambitious climate um, finance. Um, and yeah, keen technology transfers also to deter carbon leakage from the US or from uh, from Europe. So we don't want them to go to um, countries where legislation on climate uh, and carbon is less ambitious. Mm -hmm.